Hey everybody, welcome to Students at First Online. I'm Trevor Backoffner, I'm the Students and Families Pastor at First Christian Church, and we are on our final week of our series on justice that we've been calling more than a hashtag. And speaking of hashtags, I want to tell you about the hashtag that I have a love-hate relationship with. It's this, the humble brag. Hashtag humble brag. Humble brags are those things that you see all over social media, and, and it's what you do when you really want to brag about yourself, but you don't want to come across like a jerk. So you say things, uh, you brag about yourself, but kind of like in a backhanded way by either making a funny observation or by complaining. Here are a few of my favorites. So usually the person that is humble bragging thinks that they are being humble because they're not just coming out right out and saying, hey, I am this great person for doing this one thing. That's not really how it works. Um, but a recent study from Harvard and University of North Carolina Chapel Hill said that nobody is actually fooled by someone when they are humble bragging. We see right through it and it's pretty annoying. And I said I have a love-hate relationship with the humble brag. One, because it's so cringeworthy and funny because it's that way, but also because I know that I'm guilty of the occasional humble brag. And it's probably more than just the occasional. It might be a little bit more than that. And I'm a little embarrassed by it. And we all know what the humble brag is, and we know what bragging actually is. But what about the opposite? What about being humble? What do you think it means to be humble? And the topic of humility is probably, it probably would have been a great place to start with this series, but I think it's actually better uh, to end it when we talk about justice. Because remember, justice is about making wrong things right. And we ask the question, what do justice and humility have to do with each other? Because if injustice is on one end of the spectrum, humility is definitely on the other. They're, they're total opposites. And injustice happens when people behave out of selfishness or arrogance or pride or greed. And, and when those things exist, people tend to get hurt and injustice takes place. But when people act from a place of mercy and love and humility, justice tends to follow. People who are humble tend to make wrong things right more often than people who are selfish. And for the last few weeks, we've been uh, looking at a key verse in the book of Micah, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And I'm just going to read that to refresh us here. Verse 8, mankind, he has told each of you what is good and what it is the Lord requires of you, to act justly, to love faithfulness, and to walk humbly with your God. The two words that I want to focus on uh, for this passage today are walk humbly. But how do we do that? How do we walk humbly? How can I walk humbly and, and me doing that? How does that help bring about justice by writing wrongs in the world. And like our definition of mercy a couple of weeks ago, the definition of humility and the answer to our question is embodied in the person of Jesus. And here's what the apostle Paul says about Jesus in Philippians chapter two, verses three through 11. Let's read. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity when he had come as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So, Jesus left his place at the throne of God, and he humbled himself by coming to earth. He took on the form of a human and suffered the shame of a criminal, even though he never sinned. 
Now, Jesus' motivation for doing this was the salvation and redemption of you and I. He put our needs above his own comfort and status. His death and resurrection serve as the ultimate act of mercy and justice and humility. His, his death and resurrection was an act of mercy because he gave us the opportunity to be spared from the punishment we deserved. It was an act of justice because through it, he restored everyone who puts their trust in him to a right place with God. Jesus rights all of our wrongs. His sacrifice is an act of humility because through it, he put you and I before himself. And for Jesus and for us too, walking humbly, loving mercy, and doing justice are all connected. And while Jesus is the best earthly example we've ever had for loving mercy, acting justly, and walking humbly with God, there's, there's one other person I'd like to introduce you to, and her name is Mother Teresa. If you're not familiar with Mother Teresa, uh, she was a Roman Catholic nun and missionary who was called by God to serve the people of Calcutta, India. She founded the organization called Missionaries of Charity, and they cared for people dying of terrible diseases. They fed and clothed the poor. They provided um, schools and orphanages for children in need. And, and she, spoke, she, she chose to spend her life in poverty uh, in order to care for others. She is the recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize. She was the author of her own autobiography. And she's recognized all over the world as an example of the incredible love and mercy of Jesus. And just as Jesus humbled himself to show mercy uh, to, to the people around him, you know, uh, to the, the people that needed his mercy, frankly, um, Mother Teresa did the same thing. She humbled herself to show mercy to people Jesus made and loved, uh, but who were experiencing some really great injustices. And, and a reporter once asked her in an interview, he asked her, what is God's greatest gift to you? And she answered, the poor people. And, you know, that raised a little bit of confusion with her answer. And the reporter asked further, well, how are they a gift to you? And she replies, I have an opportunity to be 24 hours a day with Jesus. Man, that's powerful. How could Mother Teresa and the others carry on with this difficult work of caring for the poorest of the poor and sickest of the sick in the slums of Calcutta? Her answer was this. We try to pray through our work by doing it with Jesus, for Jesus, to Jesus. That helps us put our whole heart and soul into doing it. The dying, the crippled, the mentally ill, the unwanted, the unloved, they are Jesus in disguise. I want to read one more passage of scripture here. And in this passage, Jesus paints a picture of what it could look like to love mercy, to act justly, and to walk humbly with God. It's also a passage that Mother Teresa seemed to take very seriously. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Let's read. When the Son of Man comes into his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and take you in, or without clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. For I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't take me in. I was naked, and you didn't clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you didn't take care of me. Then they too will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or without clothes or sick or in prison and not help you? 
Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now, I said Mother Teresa took this passage of scripture in Matthew 25 very seriously. So take a look at another statement that she says uh, about her ministry to the people in Calcutta. I see Jesus in every human being. I say to myself, this is hungry Jesus. I must feed him. This is sick Jesus. This one has leprosy or gangrene. I must wash him and tend to him. I serve because I love Jesus. Like Mother Teresa, our ability to humble ourselves is connected to our ability to receive the gift of Jesus who humbled himself for us. When you truly experience God's love and mercy, you will be so humbled that you will want to extend the same love and mercy to others. And you can do that. You can walk more humbly with others when you remember how God mercifully walks with you. When you remember what Jesus did on the cross for you, when you look for the face of Jesus in everyone you meet, but especially in the faces of those of the poor and the sick, the oppressed and the marginalized, you remember that apart from him, you can do no good thing. And for the last four weeks, we've been exploring how we can approach justice not as another hashtag or trendy social media campaign, but as a lifelong mission of making wrong things right in Jesus' name. We said the journey towards justice starts when we decide to do something. And we've said that God's heart for justice is less about punishment and more about showing mercy. We've talked about the many ways that we can change our behavior in order to act more justly. And, and today we close this conversation with a reminder to follow Jesus' example and to walk humbly with God. In the last four weeks, it's, I've hoped that you've been challenged by this conversation. You know, to let God use you to make wrong things right. And I hope that you take his invitation to join him on this mission in the world. And I, and I know that that can be an overwhelming task. I know. But I believe God is not only, he, he's not only called you, but he's also equipped you to do every good work that he has designed for you to do. So do something. Love mercy, act justly, and walk humbly with your God. You have no idea how much God can and will do through you.